Hi, I'm Roger Jenkins and I'm your storyteller today. And today I'm in Bali, in the beautiful Villa Down, which is in the tiny village of Junjungan, to the north of Ubud, right here in the centre of Bali. And the story that I want to tell for you today is about the Princess Duirati, the princess who lives in the moon. For for the Balinese, it is a woman who is up there in the moon. And this is her story. So, the goddess Duirati was up in the moon where every night she would take her beautiful silver threads and she would weave them and make the most beautiful light that would spread across the entire heavens. And as she wove one night, as she looked out across the great night sky, suddenly she saw, climbing up the great wall that surrounded the garden of the gods, she saw there was a monster, Kala Rahu. And he was climbing, climbing, climbing up the wall and looking into the garden. And what was it that he wanted to find in the garden? He wanted to drink from the well that there was inside. Why? Because the waters in the well were the waters of eternal life. And to drink just one sip would grant him immortality. For it is from these waters that the gods themselves drink. And that is why the gods are still with us today and why they will be with us forevermore. And of course it was strictly forbidden for Kala Rahu or any of his sort to be able to drink from this water. And so Kala Rahu came over the wall and began to move through the garden towards the well. And Princess Duirati up there in the moon she was so alarmed, she called out and screamed aloud to Vishnu, wake up. And Lord Vishnu, who was sleeping, awoke. He heard her cry and he looked around and he saw Kala Rahu coming to the well. Immediately, Vishnu took his weapon of choice, a great silver disc, rather like a celestial frisbee, and he flung it, tsum, and it flew. And it chopped off the head of Kala Rahu as he stood there at the well. And you might think that that would be the end of the story. Oh, I wish it were. But no. For Kala Rahu by that time had begun to drink. He had taken the first sip of the water and had gone into his throat when tongue. Vishnu's great flying disc had severed Kala, Rosu, Kala Rahu's head from his body. Of course, his body fell like a stone, ka down to the ground, lifeless. But his head, his head, oh, his head, had tasted the water of eternal life and was now immortal. And Kala Rahu looked around, how had Vishnu known that he was there? And he looked up and he saw Princess Duirati in the moon. And ah, Kala Rahu began to chase, racing across the sky. And please, do not ask me how a bodiless head can so move across the heavens, but move it did. And he chased, and he came closer, and closer, and closer to the moon. But fortunately, that night was too short, and the sun came up, and Kala Rahu, ah, was not able to catch and devour Princess Rati. But the next night, and every night thereafter, Kala Rahu would race across the heavens. 
And I'm sad to say, from time to time, Kararahu would come close, close, until he was so close he could open wide his enormous jaws and begin to swallow the moon. And as he began to swallow the moon, the people down here on earth, here in Bali, would look up and they would see the moon begin to disappear inside his mouth. And when that happened, oh, then they made one heck of a hullabaloo, beating and banging anything they could. Dang, 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 ding, 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 bang, 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 all that noise <gasps> surprised Kala Rahu. And Kala Rahu, who, in his shock, would let go of the moon. And Princess Duirati was free to continue on her journey. <sighs> and Kala Rahu would have to resume chasing her once more. This is a story that continues to this day. Of course, you and I know that what we are seeing up there when the moon begins to disappear is what you and I would call a lunar eclipse. And rather than the shadow of Kalarahu's throat, what we are seeing is the shadow of the earth thrown by the sun onto the face of the moon. But in those long, long, long ago days, before we had telescopes and had such knowledge of the universe in which we live, I'm sure the story of Kala Rahu and the Princess Duirati offered much more reassuring comfort.